Hey, how's it going? It's Tim Brown, and this is the Hook Better Leads podcast. It's also just a YouTube video out here. And cool. today I've got Sydney Olson, uh, who works at Hook. Um, how are you doing? I'm good. How are you? I'm doing very well. Um, so we're talking about roofing customer service tips after we listened to 100 plus calls. We did. Yesterday. It was a lot. And we learned a lot of stuff. We learned a lot about what not to do. We learned about what the best roofing companies are doing on customer service. Um, and we have some of the best roofing companies in the United States to learn from. Yeah. And so my question for you, just to kick it off with a bang, is give me the three top mistakes that roofing companies are making in their phone etiquette. So I would say the first thing that people are making a mistake on is a big one, which is just not answering the phone. Well, that one should be easier to fix. <laughs> yeah, but it was a lot. I mean, it was surprising. There are a lot of people out there that are missing calls. So obviously you can't close a deal if you don't answer the phone. Mm. Probably number one biggest thing. Okay. <laughs> um, the second one, probably people were not prepared to like give the correct information they didn't have in front of them when they could set an appointment, who was going to be going out. It just felt like they just weren't prepared to give the correct information. Okay. Um, so it was taking a long time. I would say the third thing is probably not asking the right questions soon enough. So not asking like, what location are you in or what's your address? So you don't know if that person's even in your service area. Mm -hmm. And then the whole call becomes a waste of time. And I mean, that could really annoy somebody if they're on yeah. the phone for 12 minutes and then suddenly you're like, oh, we don't service that area. Yeah, exactly. And that happened. There was really good long calls where it was like, oh, this is a really good sales call or they're going to schedule an appointment. And then I got to it and they were out of their service area. Okay. I appreciate you leading with the biggest mistakes, but I want to go really quickly into the why here. Why are we making this video? Why is the customer service or the person answering the phones important? And are they important yeah. at a roofing company? Yes, I would say they're definitely important. Um, it's the first interaction that somebody's having with your company. A lot of times, especially when people are just Googling, you know, roofing company Minneapolis, they don't know you, they don't know your brand, they don't know anything about you. And so that's really their first touch with your company. So not having a good experience, they're way less likely to probably hire you. They're gonna hang up the phone and call somebody else and you're not going to close that job. So less sales. Less sales and less money. <laughs> less money for you personally. Yeah. That's a pretty good reason to figure this out and to get systems around it. Okay, so we talked about what failed. Now, what? how were people winning? What were the best people doing at this that we listened to? Yeah, so kind of the opposite of the worst thing that people were doing was people were answering their phones and answering their phones really quickly. Mm. Um, if you were calling somebody, would you sit through 30 seconds of ringing or 30 seconds of an automated message? Maybe if I was a referral and I thought that this company was already good, but maybe not if I just clicked on an ad. Yeah, exactly. And so honestly, we were seeing people hang up after five seconds. That was surprising. Yeah. That was kind of crazy. This, I, you know, two rings, maybe the third was about to start and boom. Yeah. Like what? Yeah. And I mean, people are, people are busy. They're frustrated when they are, they're calling you because usually they have a problem, right? Like their roof is leaking. They have water piled up. They're unhappy. And in piles, just water, just water piles. Water. How many water piles do you have in your house right now? If you now? have any water piles, it's not good. Yeah. But actually it was kind of crazy for me to experience. Like we listened to these calls and like, it was, it was crazy that a lot of people really, I guess it's not that crazy if you're in a roofing company, but as an outside company that doesn't always do this, to see how many people were experiencing a leak right at that moment. Mm -hmm. And basically, how well prepared are you to help somebody in that position? That's a very common position, apparently. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that that kind of goes along too with Another good thing people are doing is having some technical knowledge. Obviously, you don't have to be the person that's getting up on the roof to answer the phone, but being able to understand like, oh, I'm having a leak here and having a little bit of an idea of what that might be, what the issue might be, and being able to walk that customer through some of that, I think was really, really helpful and people were really appreciative of that. I think it's that balance between like, it's hard to have the most technical people answering the phone yeah. 
all the time and maybe not outsourcing it to the other side of the world. Exactly. Right. right? So like it, it's, a, it's trying to figure out that balance. How can we have somebody that has enough knowledge to answer the basic questions? Mm -hmm. And I mean, it was impressive though, when they would just rattle off, like we saw a storm in your area. Yes. Um, we've seen that common issue with, you know, whatever. Like I just, that was very cool when they were able to do that. Mm -hmm. And I don't think, again, you don't need to be the most technical person to have that information, but the more calls that you're taking, so if you have dedicated people that are answering the phones, they get more of that information. They know the right questions to ask. They start getting that context of what's going on in these people's service areas and these neighborhoods. And, you know, they're just, they have that context and information so they can really help guide people through that conversation. Um, like I, if I had a leak in my roof and I called, I'd be like, I don't even know where to begin. I don't know what I need. I don't, I don't know what to say. So being able to guide them is really, really helpful. And we noticed that. So how long should it take for, for someone to get to a human? Well, it kind of dif uh, depends no, on tell what us. you've got tell going us. on. I know. Say it straight. Uh, 30 seconds was common, but is too long. Yeah. I mean, a lot of people are having, especially if you have an automated message that happens first, that's probably five to 10 seconds. And then another five seconds of two, ring two rings, that's already 15 to 20 seconds. So anything longer than that is too long. You need to answer your phones 15 to 20 seconds in. I love that. What's the ideal general vibe? And we'll go into the rest of like the mistakes and the wins mm -hmm. that we saw specifically, but what's the, what should be the vibe of somebody answering the phone? Does it matter? Can they just be kind of like sad and, and slow? I would hope not. <laughs> Again, people that are calling with roof issues are frustrated. So somebody that has empathy, somebody that, I mean, you don't have to be like super happy and excited because that can be weird, but just being a normal person, having a positive, like welcoming, enjoyable vibe, I think is good. We, there were a lot of, there were some calls that people were like, yes, hello. Yeah, very like chill to the point where it's like, do you want my business? Yeah. That's the question I would have. Like. Do you want my business? You should act, you should be answering the phone like you want their business and you're excited to help them. It's yes. And like you said, normal, just be friendly and... Engaged. And be engaged in the conversation. Engaged. That's a really good yeah. way to put it. Like there was some really good conversations where, you know, not everybody is a comedian, not everybody's super funny, but you're laughing at if they tell a little joke, laugh at their jokes, make these people feel like they're normal people and they're talking to another human. Just be there, be engaged. We also heard someone tell a joke and the person- Did, did not laugh. laugh. <laughs> the, the homeowner told a joke and the, the person answering the call didn't laugh. And it was very uncomfortable. It was so uncomfortable. So like, it does matter a little bit, right? It does matter just being engaged. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I guess, can you go through the rest of the mistakes and the rest of the wins that you saw? Mm -hmm. um, so something that we talk with our clients about is, are you okay if somebody calls you thinking that you're another roofing company? Not necessarily thinking that you're another company, but they put into Google, you know, X roofing specifically. They end up calling you, you answer. Because we advertise for their name. Because we're advertising. Oopsie doopsie. Or sometimes it just happens. Yeah. Sometimes you don't even have to bid on your competitor's okay, names. Yeah. But if it's, you know, if they're like something roofing and their, their name is close and they pop up or whatever, somebody calls you, they think you're someone else, you answer and they're like, nope, we're not them. Mm -hmm. End of conversation. Yeah. But you can flip that customer hey, no, we're not that company, but we are a roofing company. What are you looking for? How can we help you? Being able to like be prepared to flip that person. We're or ready at to least, help. At least give them the option of, oh, I know you're trying to call this person, but like I'm here right now. How can I help you? And almost minimizing the fact that it's a different company. Yeah. I mean, don't say you're them because <laughs> yes, what if no. they have an issue with a previous roof? So, but no, we're not, but I mean, I think that there's a way to do that mm -hmm. and you can figure that out in your team. And you might know that as an owner, like I'm owner watching this video, mm -hmm. but you need to spread that information to the rest of the people on your team. So anyone that's answering the phone, we, this is how we're going to handle when somebody calls for a different roofing company. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, exactly. Just being prepared for that. Um, another thing that we saw, we kind of touched on this a little bit, but just really, really long, either like automated messages mm -hmm. or really long, um, like phone trees. So, you know, press one if you need this or press two if you need this. And it just got to the point where, I mean, it was a minute into the call when somebody actually finally answered. So just being aware of if you have an automated message, that can be great. Let somebody know who you are and that somebody's going to be answering the phone, mm -hmm. but being aware of how long it's taking and how easy it is for somebody to navigate through that. And then when they'd answer, it'd be, they'd be really good. Yes. But if it takes a minute to get there, people hang up. Absolutely. Um, so just being aware also of if you're utilizing some sort of software. So our clients are using CallRail okay. and sometimes there already is a little bit of an automated message that says this call might be recorded. So just being aware of what's already there and if you're doing it again, that you don't necessarily need it on both sides. Um, and watch the message that sounds like you're answering. <laughs> yes, like the joke answer. Of, yeah, because that, will, that might frustrate someone. Yeah. Um, but a lot of it, I think a lot of the things that we saw people making the mistakes on were just, you know, not having a good vibe, just a general good vibe, not answering the phones and not knowing, not having the information that somebody needs right away. What if I'm not a person that has a good vibe? No, I'm just kidding. I'm not. I'm... You can pretend. No, I, I pretend all the time. That's part of the job. Yeah, exactly. It's just, you got to be able to answer someone's questions. You got to be able to honestly in this role as the customer service rep of a roofing company, you're probably going to take a lot of heat and you're going to have mm. angry customers. So maybe that's why their pipe wasn't great yeah, that day. Maybe that they were like, I had 10 calls today and somebody just yelled at me for no reason. But being, you know, gotta have a little bit of tough skin. Hey, no, I mean, Hey, we respect the emotional labor that goes into answering phones and to being a customer service representative. It's your shingles. Like the, they've got the shingle, they're putting the shingles on the roof. It's difficult, it's hot some days, it's tiring, it's backbreaking work. You have this other hard work, which is having a good vibe mm -hmm. and being engaged on these phone calls and knowing Who's up next if you're sending out a, yeah. a service person, um, knowing what your service area is mm -hmm. and knowing when the next thing is available. So knowing when you're able to get out there and having those things right away. So this is your job. This is your backbreaking work. This is your emotional labor. It's respectable. It's difficult, but it is the job. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Whenever somebody was able to be like, okay, you have a roof leak, you need somebody out tomorrow. We have, Tim will be there at 3 p.m. Does that work for you? Give them the option. Giving them an option is always helpful rather than, well, what do you have open tomorrow? Just give them a couple times, give them a couple days, and people are much more likely to make it work mm -hmm. rather than be like, oh, I don't know. Yeah. I need somebody to be home, but I'm not home and give them options. They're getting to that point. It's a good, it's a good call. Yeah. Anything else that's, uh, that was a mistake that you saw? Yeah. Um, just some unnecessary questions being asked. Um, so again, ask good questions. It's all about asking the good and right questions, but some of them were just like convoluted, weird, unnecessary. Like, give an example. Um, so you're, somebody's calling and you're going to be sending somebody out to your home. And so you have to build trust. You have to build credibility. And somebody asked, um, like, are you the sole owner of the home? Fine question. I don't know if it's fully necessary, but fine. And then they said, will your husband be home for the inspection? Mm -hmm. So a couple Why different not? ways. Okay. So, so in this case, I mean, I will say, so this was somebody that wasn't from the United States. Yep. And I think that there's not a problem with that, except for there's a cultural sensitivity around this particular issue. So if you are in that position, no, in the United States, there's a cultural sensitivity around this idea of like, you're telling me I need my husband to be there to make a purchase decision. Mm -hmm. And that's not how, how an average female, <laughs> I saw, saw Cindy's eye just twitch at me. I was like, what? <laughs> Um, so I don't know if that's because I'm saying something about people from a different country or if it's because I'm saying something about females not being able to make a decision. But the point is, is like, it makes a lot of sense for you to say, is the other person who's, if there's another person that's 
going to hold this back from a decision being made. Are they going to be there? If there's something about that, you just the way that we're asking is very yeah, important. Absolutely. And so no female wants to be told they can't make a decision without yeah. their husband. Or are you going to be home alone when yeah. we're sending somebody out tomorrow? So there's a couple of ways of just like either it's weird and creepy or you can't make a decision on your own. So exactly like you said, there's ways to ask it that makes sense. And it was, in this case, it was a dude asking it. Yeah. So, it so he's asking like, is your husband going to be home? Like that is, that does sound scary. Yeah, exactly. So just, you know, again, empathy, having empathy for people, understanding the situations that you're in and the things that you're saying, are the decision makers going to be there? That, I guess that begs the question here. Should we, is this something we can outsource? Mm -hmm. Cause it, it's expensive to have somebody sitting at the office. Mm -hmm. And then other times roofers tell me that they, if they have a storm mm -hmm. and they had, sometimes there's two people answering phones and there's not still not enough people to answer phones yeah. for all the business coming in. That's a good problem to have, but it can be, it can quickly become a bad thing. Mm -hmm. um, if people are leaving reviews and saying you can't answer the phone or other crazy stuff. So yeah. can we outsource this or what, what's, is it a hybrid approach? What's mm -hmm. the best way to do that? I mean, it kind of depends because an unanswered phone call is it just a lost opportunity, right? So you're either not answering the phone or you have somebody who maybe makes somebody feel uncomfortable or it's just it's just not a good experience. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of it is it's weighing those two options. I think yes, a hybrid option is the best option during your business hours have dedicated people answering the phones. They have the knowledge, they have the context. They context. have the good vibe. Yes. And then, you know, maybe if yep, yeah, maybe it's a storm. So you have somebody prepared, okay, we can grab this call center for a storm. Maybe it's nights and weekends because you don't want to be missing out on those phone calls. Um, but I think number one, if you can have a dedicated customer service person answering your phones, a couple of them maybe. Um, and if you need to supplement, you can with some outsourcing. I think that's a great answer. Is there any other tips that you've got to give roofing companies about this? Yeah, at the end of a phone call, um, I think it's great to just kind of wrap it up and put a nice little bow on it. So confirming all the details, letting people know what they can expect in the inspection or when somebody's coming. One thing I love that we heard from one of our clients was, we're sending you a follow-up email and we're gonna put a picture of the technician that's coming out. Because again, you wanna create that trust. It's, you're letting somebody into your home and you wanna be able to be like, yep, that's the person that they said was coming. Another thing that I saw that I, I think could be a good improvement is like, if you are taking notes, say I'm taking notes. Mm -hmm. If it takes you 15 seconds to write something down or say, one moment, I'm just taking some notes here. So kind of preface what you're doing. It is hard to multitask, but that's an, an opportunity for even some of our best clients to improve. Yeah. And one thing I notice that I miss a lot when I answer the phone is somebody usually says their name right away. So when I answer the phone, they say, hey, it's Sydney from X company. And then usually I miss it because I'm not even thinking about it. So we heard some really, really great phone calls where people grab their name right away. Even sometimes they got at least like the city that they were in. And then they were able to use their name through the rest of the conversation and they didn't have to repeat those questions. So just listening right away, taking really good notes. And exactly like you said to communicating what you're doing, like, oh, yep, I'm just looking up your location really quick. I'm just typing in your information for to get you a quote, um, but being really communicate communicative with what you're doing because they can't see you. So we'll just go back and forth here. Another one we saw was people knowing this, the areas that got hit by a storm. Mm -hmm. So sometimes they'd be like, we're in this area or they'd say their address and then they could look and they said, well, we have some other customers in your area that were affected by a mm -hmm. storm last year. We will bring out a quote for both. Uh, whether it's storm restoration or if it ends up being a, a retail job, basically, and talking them through that a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, and insurance, right? Like we know how to handle that if that's the way that this goes and we're capable of um, working through that with you and helping equip you in the, in the right ways to, to make sure that you're able to, you know, file a claim, basically. Mm -hmm. I, don't, I think that there's some language around that. Obviously, you know, stay above board. But um, talking them through a little bit about insurance, because I think that if 
they don't understand they don't understand as much as you do i'm a homeowner i would have no clue what the next step is mm -hmm. as far as in, an insurance claim yeah absolutely and even just offering that as well if you do insurance work or if you do any storm restoration when somebody is like yep i have this repair or whatever something's wrong and even just asking have you talked to insurance that's it's, it's an option that we can at least put this through to insurance it makes the homeowner feel really taken care of and having that information to give out to your people who are going to do the inspection is helpful like oh they've already got their insurance claim approved so any information that you can equip them with before they even go out to the home again makes you look really knowledgeable makes you look like you know what you're doing and that the communication internally is good mm. and then basically what to expect right mm -hmm. so they're coming out of this time this is who it's going to be yeah exactly just what the process will look like i think mm -hmm. yeah anything, anything else on that that we heard um in terms of like i think that just the number number one number two number three things that you yeah. can do is just being prepared answering your phones and being a kind human i think like everything else is a good tip that is going to help you close more deals it's going to help you get probably better reviews it's going to help you get more customers but without those first three things you're not going to get to the point where you're going to be getting more business yeah so <laughs> as long as you get those basics down it comes down to what if you what if you like blew it out of the water though like the best company that we saw i'll just say them because i'm saying a compliment was dreamworks roofing yep and they blew it out of the water every single time they answered the the phone it was you know it was consistent vibe it was positive it was mm -hmm. you know they answer quick yep. say so they let the person talk quick too they're not saying a bunch of stuff at the beginning and they were laughing along with the homeowner half the time and that's something that doesn't happen by accident yeah. Talking to Charlie just a second ago, he said, that's a goal of ours. Mm -hmm. To answer within two rings and to try to laugh at least once with them on the call. Yeah. And he's trying to create an addicting experience, a positive addicting experience that if they talk to three other roofing companies and theirs is like that, they're going to win that business. Because yeah. why wouldn't you work with the company that was warm? Yeah. So basically just there is a a really great customer experience that like you can create on this call. So I don't see why not. I don't see why not make this a, a central part of your process. Yeah, absolutely. Again, it's the first contact that somebody has with your business. It should be a good experience. And I think it's, it's easy to implement those three things. And then as you get better at doing those things, there's more that you can do. You can be more prepared. You can be more knowledgeable. You can have more context, but it's really about just being kind. And you could have your wife's secret shop, other roofing companies in the area and figure out how good their customer service. Or you could just say, you know what? I don't care what the competitors are doing. We're just going to go above and beyond over the top good customer service. Mm -hmm. Because a lot of roofing companies have a low standard yeah. for what customer service looks like on the phone. And I think you can do better. Yep. If you care about customer service and that's what you want to be giving to your clients, that's exactly what Hook cares about too. We care about our customer service. We want you to feel taken care of. We want you to know what's going on with your marketing and feel empowered to continue growing, to continue closing business. And we want to be there along with you and help you get there. So if you are a modern roofing company that wants to grow and wants to work with somebody who is excited to help you grow, consider Hook Agency. Awesome. Thank you so much. And where can people uh, connect with you online? Um, yeah. So my Instagram is at Sydney underscore Bailey. It's spelled with two E's on both sides of it. Um, LinkedIn, I think is just Sydney Olson. So connect with me. Olson I, with an E. Ol so. Yes. Olson with an E. All of my names are spelled weird. Lots of E's in there. Um, but I like to post about what we're doing here at Hook. And I like to post about what our clients are doing that it's really exciting as well. So follow me. Awesome. And thank you so much for watching the Hook Better Leads podcast or listening. And I appreciate you guys checking it out. Thanks. Bye.